Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to another poolside video. This is a request. This is another installation of buy or pass. You guys really seem to love that type of video. So here I am to comply with another installation. I have several fragrances I'll be talking about that are currently hyped, recently hyped or new, whether or not I'm going to buy them or pass on them. And with that, let's just get going because the sun is going down. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to be talking about isn't a new release. I wanna say it was released in either the end of 2022 or the beginning of 2023. It's probably 2022. And it's a fragrance called Candy. Now I am a sucker for anything with cotton candy. It seems to be one of those notes I'm collecting currently. So when that fragrance came out, I was very interested. My friend gave me a sample and here I am to discuss it. So this perfume has red berries, there's cherries, cotton candy, vanilla, and maybe some light white florals. And it was one of those perfumes that was kind of like, oh yeah, when I tested it, I really liked it. So I knew I was going to buy it. So spoiler alert, here it is, it's candy. This is not groundbreaking guys, this is not, but it's just so pleasant to me. It is in my wheelhouse. It's not a complex fragrance, but it's fun and fresh. There's a little bit of tartness to it. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet and it's not a sticky sweet gourmand. There's still a nice tartness to it. It's airy, it's not heavy and the vanilla is in the background. I get more of like a candied fruity sweetness in here. This to me is going to be one of those very easy reaches for the summer. Like when I want something sweet and fruity and light, I'm gonna pull for candy. Now, in my opinion, it's overpriced, it's not groundbreaking, but there was just something in here that just screamed me. It's an easy reach, grab and go. I'm happy I got it, but it is overpriced. I have a feeling it'll start to show up in the discount websites pretty quickly and maybe over the next year because I do feel like it is overpriced for what you get, but I like it and I bought it. The next one is by Jusette and it is Accident Olive Vanilla Cream de la Berry, okay? So my wonderful friend sent me a decant. I bought another one because I wanted to make sure it was something I liked. And all I have to tell you is four words, okay? Strawberry, cheesecake, vanilla, and whipped cream. I mean, hello. <laughs> That's me. I smelled it, it was kind of like love at first sniff. I loved it. So I loved the original Accident Olive Vanilla and this one is a really fun take on that fragrance. To me, what I wrote down, because I've already burned through the sample, I wrote down it's a strawberry cheesecake concrete, which that's what we call around here. Like it's a frozen custard that you can add anything to mixed with Captain Crunch cereal milk, okay? So you have a strawberry cheesecake frozen custard and Captain Crunch cereal milk. It is, it's delicious, it's fun, my mouth is watering. It really is kind of a, a must try for gourmand lovers, but you must love gourmand perfumes to even remotely wanna like this because like I said, it's sweet, it's heavy, it's vanillic, it's very, very gourmand. And I'm not gonna buy it right now because it's a little bit on the heavy side. It's a little bit heavy on that gourmand vanilla, not the light fruity sweetness that candy has. So I'm going to wait towards the end of summer before I purchase it, but I definitely will purchase it. Occident a la vanilla creme de berry. The next one is a relatively new release by Dolce & Gabbana. It's the newest flanker for the light blue series and it is light blue summer vibes. Now this perfume had me at the get-go with the bottle. The bottle is just stunning. It reminds me of Italy and I almost blind bought it based on that dang bottle, but nope. I went over to Ulta and I tested it. I thought it was a very, very nice take on the original. Now it does smell a lot like um, light blue intense, which I have. And this one has peach in it. And I'm gonna be honest, the peach doesn't scream in my face. I definitely get the lemon up top and I get a nice fruity sweetness. And the peach to me comes out a little bit more in the dry down. So it's the OG minus that heavy musk that was in the OG. Still has lemons, has a little bit of peach. It's light and bright. It's very, very light wearing. It's not a powerhouse. So if you want your perfume to last six to eight hours, this is not the one. But I just bought it a couple days ago because it popped up on Joma Shop on sale. I posted that to my community page and I scooped it up at the low, low price of like $49. So it is currently on its way to me. Light blue summer vibes. Oh, and one thing I did want to mention about the light blue is that in my opinion, because it's so light wearing and fresh, it's going to be a great perfume to wear 
on hot, hot days. So this is one that's going to be in my heat proof video. The next one is by the House of Siage and I was super interested in this line when the Harry Potter collaboration came out. So it took me a while to track down the discovery set. Listen, you do not need to ever, what did I say about blind buying? No blind buying guys. Nothing is blind buy safe. And particularly with this house, House of Siage, I have to give it to them. They have every single fragrance in a discovery set, okay? You never have to blind buy. You can get a discovery set, get to know the perfumes, and wait until one of them goes on sale, and then you can buy it, and you don't have to blind buy it. So the Harry Potter collection, the discovery set, was sold out for a while. I eventually got it, and the one I was really interested in was Hufflepuff because I knew it was a citrusy vanilla. I love citrusy vanillas, particularly in the hot weather. So will I buy it? Well, the answer is right here. I bought it. It was really kind of love at first sniff. This one is absolutely delicious. It is a very sweet perfume. Oh my gosh. So it has citruses. I want to say like lemon and orange. There's coconut in here and a very, very heavy vanilla. This to me smells like a lemon coconut angel food cake with orange syrup <laughs> drizzled on top. It is sweet and it starts off really sweet. And I wore this when my mom was in town. My mom doesn't really like gourmands. She hates vanilla. I hate to say hate, she doesn't like the word hate. She doesn't like vanilla and she doesn't like coconut. And I wore it and she goes, oh, I can smell your perfume. And I said, oh, do you like it? And she said, no. <laughs> I love someone who's honest. I go, oh, it's got vanilla and coconut. She's like, yeah, I don't like that. However, it lasted, I wore it the whole day, and as I was dropping them off at the airport, like eight hours later or several hours later, she gave me a hug. She goes, oh, you smell so good. I'm like, mom, it's the same perfume. She goes, oh, I like it much better now. So it does, it has, it's, it's not overwhelming. It has a moderate scent bubble, but it lasts all day. And when someone comes really close, they can get, they can pick up the perfume and the sweetness has died down. So it's not like as tooth achingly sweet in the beginning. It has more of a fluffy, like a citrusy vanilla coconut vibe. I absolutely love it. And I considered breaking my rule of not ever buying a backup this past week when it went on sale. I got this at a teeny little sale. I was ready to buy it and it went on an even better sale. I think I got this at 30% off. It's now 35% off. I almost broke my rule of not blind buying, I mean, of not getting backups because I like it this much and I stayed strong. I don't know, we'll see if I stay strong. If they have a 50% off sale, who knows? I absolutely love it and have already been wearing it. So now I'm going to go with a few designers. I tested these two times, two full times, clothes, skin, blotter. And the second time, and I, I went over to Ulta to try all these. These are all, the next few are designers. I kept one of the blotters in a little plastic bag so I could remember how things smelled. Yep. So this is Donna born in Roma and this is the Intense. So this fragrance is a very popular perfume and now that I'm smelling it two days later, I actually like it more, but this has a very heavy jasmine. So it's less sweet and it has a very strong jasmine in it. So, and it's the type of jasmine that's indolic. It's kind of like that alien jasmine that's just, that's not my jasmine. Alien and I, we don't get along. So if you like the original Born in Roma and you love the jasmine that's an alien, you definitely need to get your nose on this because you might love it. But for those reasons, this will be a pass for me. Now the next one is one by Dolce & Gabbana, another Dolce & Gabbana. And this one I wasn't even planning on testing or wasn't even planning on testing. It wasn't really in my main radar. I saw it over at Ulta when I was testing everything else. And I saw this and it's called Q or Queen by Dolce & Gabbana. And I was blown away. This one is the sleeper. This one shocked me. This one was an absolute love at first sniff. This one is very unique and it smells nothing like I have in my collection, but it, it is a fruity fragrance with some citruses that's not overly fruity and it's not overly citrusy. So it's not a freshy. There's something about it. There's a little bit of vanilla in it, but it's not gourmand. It's like a soft, gentle, fruity citrus. And that's the best that I can do. 
I think it has cherries in here. There's a little bit of powderiness, maybe from some heliotrope. Again, some citruses, maybe lemon, grapefruit, blood orange, something. This is blended so well, I'm having a very difficult time picking out individual notes. All I can tell you, it is a citrusy, fruity perfume. I know there's some subtle florals, maybe rose. It's just, I can't really pick out anything per se. And maybe that's one of the reasons I love it, is because it's very smooth. It's very unique and very, very smooth. And it has a little bit of woodiness in the dry down. There's something creamy about it, almost like a, has a creamy lotion-like quality. So you better believe I already bought, it's on its way, I bought Queen or Q by Dolce & Gabbana. That is a yes or a buy. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is one I meant to talk about on my first video and I just forgot, I simply forgot because it's still in its little little dabber sample. And this one is by Uniki Luxury and it's called Mashumaro. This one was a big no for me and I hate to be overly critical because for the most part, I love everything that Uniki has come out with. I have the big travel set, like their entire collection in these 10 ml bottles. I love it. I didn't bring it full side, but I absolutely love it. And every single one in there, except chocolate makes me happy. I didn't really like that one. I love them and I love having all the travel sizes. So um, this one just absolutely, I, th I, I had heard that it was a marshmallow based fragrance. So of course I was all over it and for the most part, I've been good about sticking to my blind buys. This one was very expensive, so there was no way I was going to blind buy. And I am so glad I didn't blind buy this because, you know, this is a pol this is gonna be a polarizing perfume. This is not gonna be for everybody. This is not for me. I definitely got, I did not get marshmallow. I got something burned. I got like a burned fuel. And it just, it was like burned fuel and woody and it just wasn't what I anticipated. And so I will be passing on Marshmallow. I wish I had got something like a marshmallow. I wish I got something more vanilla, more light and fluffy, but I definitely know that there are people out there that are going to really enjoy this. It's just a pass for me, which is good because it's really expensive. The next one is, um, but I did want to go over it because I've had people on Instagram ask me, why haven't you posted this one? You love C1A Andrioli. Why haven't you showed any reels or posted anything about don't ask me permission? And the reason why is that I love so many C1A Andriolis. I think I have four or five in my collection and I love them. This one is not one of them. So this one is a fruity musk. This is kind of like in the same vein of Herba Pira. And that's one perfume that I just don't, I don't like that in your face, super strong, suffocating, fruity musk is just not for me. It is just, people have different sensitivities to musk. And I'm telling you, I am uber sensitive to that type of musk. I find it just kind of overwhelming and I'm sure it's a beautiful fragrance. And I might even dare to say that it's, it could be a masterpiece in some perfume circles. It's just not for me. This is actually a toned down version of Herba Pura. I wanna say the main fruit in here is passion fruit, but it's just too close to Herba Pura. It's not as nuclear, but it's pretty darn close. And so this will be a no. This is a no for me. That's why you've never seen it and it's why I've never shown it. I think I'm just going to do maybe one or two more and then call it a day because the sun is going down and it's a lovely Saturday night. So the next one is, hey guys, one of the notes that I'm really into right now, or I'm into the notes blueberry and lemon. I've always been into lemon, always. Um, blueberry has been hit or miss, and there haven't been a ton of blueberry fragrances on the market. But now I'm really interested, and I'm noticing a lot of blueberry fragrances coming on the market. And lemon, I can see, is very big. So if you want me to do a separate lemon, and blueberry fragrance video, I, two separate ones. I can do that. I have enough material for both of them. I'm happy to do that. The next one is one of the newer lemons to come out. It's called Bake, and it is an Oliver Crest creation. And I almost blind bought, but again, I held firm. I didn't do it, and I got a sample, and I'm really happy that I did. Now, this is a this is a gourmandy lemon. I would call it a gourmand lemon with a kick, with a twist. It's not the usual fluffy, chiffon-y, gourmandy lemon. There's something about it that is, is dark and warm and a little bit spicy. So with that being said, I bought it. <laughs> so that was a yes for bake. Yeah, it had, there's something spicy. And, and the lemon in here is more of like a lemon rind, like an older lemon rind. Not a fresh lemon rind, but a, a lemon that's been 
that's ripened up a little bit and the rind to that, maybe a little bit of spices and something. Maybe it's got like sandalwood in here, maybe a little bit of cedar. So this, which I think anchors it as a gourmand. So this isn't an overly like lemon meringue pie gourmand. It is a lemon gourmand, again, with a twist. And I think the kind of the spicier notes, the darker notes or the, the woodier notes are to maybe make it more appealing and as unisex as possible. But even though I have a few, oh, there's one more I do want to talk about. One more I do want to talk about. It is by Zerjoff, it's Apollonia. That one has kind of got a lot of hype recently and I have a lovely friend, Katrina. I met her over on Instagram and she has a great Instagram page, but she has been so amazing. She has sent me all these decants and I have fallen in love with so many and she sent me Apollonia. I tried it and I really, really liked it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy it on the first couple wears, on the third wear, I was, it was like hook, line, and sinker. I bought it, I purchased it on Joma Shop. I got a really good deal. And it is in my hands, Apollonia. So why did I buy it? So this is a really pretty, this is a like a dry musk. What's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's dry. It's not a gauzy musk. There's something very dry about it. It has iris in here, but the iris is definitely detectable. I get it in the powdery. It's a powdery iris. So it's musk, iris, and a little bit of florals. And my friend said, you know what? Sometimes it smells like a blueberry something or other. And on the third wear, that's when I decided I was gonna buy it. I did. I got something like a blueberry, like a dry blueberry scony musk. So that was like, oh yeah, it's a done deal. I love it. So I did get Apollonia. I will say it is lighter wearing. A lot of Zerjoffs I, I find a very, very good performance. This is a lighter one which is great because it's going to make it perfect for hot summer months. So this is definitely one I will be wearing in the hot summer months and I tried to really kind of cruise through that so I could get through these perfumes before the sun went down. It's going down, it's behind the trees. And I have some material left over for another installation maybe in three or four weeks, maybe for the month of June or July. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried any of these, if you had any of these, or if you're contemplating getting any of these, or if you think they are overhyped. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys had fun hanging out with me today poolside. If you like these type of videos, also let me know. I did have a few people last year that kind of like, when are you going to go inside and film? I'm tired of seeing you in sunglasses. <laughs> I'm tired of all the noises. So not everybody is a fan of the poolside perfumes, but if you like them, let me know down below. And if I get enough people tell me they enjoy this type, I will keep doing it over the summer as long as the weather cooperates. So thanks for stopping by. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.